Before William T. G. Morton successfully demonstrated the use of anesthesia for surgery in 1846, patients dreaded surgery, fearing excruciating pain or worse, fatality. To ensure the life of a patient, surgeons needed to perform surgery fast and efficiently, and no one was faster than Robert Liston. This is the story of the Scottish surgeon, whom colleagues nicknamed the fastest knife in West End. Liston, born October 28, 1794, was the son of Reverend Henry Liston, a Scottish inventor and minister. The young boy's mother died when he was six, so his father had raised and taught him. Overseeing Robert's education until the age of 14 after entering the University of Edinburgh. After only two years, the younger Liston began apprenticing under the famed anatomist John Barclay, before being appointed house surgeon at the Royal Infirmary in Edinburgh at the youthful age of 20, and two years later, admitted to the Royal College of Surgeons in London. Fearless and disputatious, and overtowering at six foot two inches, Liston often dissented from his peers and authorities by operating on patients that other surgeons had turned away. This fortitude and unrelentless passion are what contributed to his appointment as professor of surgery at London's newly opened University College Hospital at the age of 34, a position he held the rest of his life. During his time as surgeon, Liston gained a reputation as the fastest knife in West End, and earned the moniker for being able to complete above-the-knee amputation in less than 30 seconds, at 28 seconds to be exact. The speed is just as impressive as the confidence, precision, and skill necessary to perform such a feat. Other amputations he successfully completed were finished in under three minutes, and he would begin his operations with the announcement, Timey, gentlemen. Such speed doesn't come without a high set of standards, though, and he was known for his pursuit of excellence in the surgical theater, along with the bravado necessary to make his surgeries a show. He often accepted cases that other surgeons deemed impossible, and saw success in those cases. While other surgeons had lost one in four patients, Liston only lost one in ten. Although the medical field had yet to pick up on germ theory and the fact that infections are caused by microorganisms, Liston carried habits that helped prevent his patients from developing infections. He washed his hands thoroughly before surgery, wore a clean cloth apron, worked with clean surgical sponges, and soaked his dressing in cold water instead of the salves other surgeons used. In this way, Liston was a visionary. None of this was common practice at the time and surgeons in his day weren't particularly clean. They even considered a blood and pus soaked apron as a sign of experience, rather than what it was, a gross breeding ground for infection. Along with his cleanliness, Liston believed the surgeon needed a thorough understanding of anatomy and skill owned from completed cases, not number of years worked as a surgeon, a progressive view for his time and one not adopted until much later, and still disagreed on by some to this day. While such speed and confidence were impressive, Things didn't always turn out successfully for Liston. Overconfidence in Liston's part led to the death of a small boy. Liston had a disagreement with the house surgeon who tried explaining that a tumor on the small boy's neck was an aneurysm. Liston would hear none of it, insisting it was an abscess. Liston cavalierly exclaimed, who ever heard of an aneurysm in one so young, before lancing it. He was wrong and the tumor turned out to be an aneurysm, resulting in the boy bleeding to death. In the surgeon's most famous case, Liston's speed went from impressive to disastrous, becoming known in history for having the only surgical operation to end with a 300% mortality rate, Liston's patient, an assistant, and a spectator. Reportedly, Liston went on to perform a routine, lightning-fast leg amputation, but during the operation, the patient began to shake uncontrollably and violently, thrashing about on the operating table. Liston's assistants tried in vain to properly secure the patient, and by the end of the chaos, Liston had amputated the patient's limb along with a few of the assistant's fingers. A nearby spectator dressed well for the occasion suffered a slash to his coattails from Liston's scalpel while the surgeon was changing tools. Unfortunately, because of the confusion and blood in the room, the spectator believed that he had been injured and died of shock immediately. Both the patient and assistant caught gangrene infection shortly after the operation and died. While some doubt the veracity of the story, the 300% mortality surgery remains Liston's most famous case. When Liston himself died at the age of 53, a massive number of people attended his funeral, hundreds of them students he had taught. In the classroom, Liston was fair but also harsh and critical. He held his students to the exceptionally high standards that allowed him to perform his own surgeries. 
his pursuit of excellence in the surgical theater was valued by his students, and was also recognized posthumously for his contribution nearly 100 years after with the Liston Medal for Surgery, which was awarded by the University College Hospital for Surgical Excellence. Clearly, he was admired for the rigor he subjected his students and colleagues to, but Liston's colleagues do not appear to have always appreciated the criticism. They often wanted him banned from the wards they worked in, as he had also gained a reputation for being pretentious and unpleasant to work with. These poor interactions with colleagues are what initially made Liston move from Edinburgh to London. With his patients, on the other hand, he proved very compassionate and kind. In fact, when Liston writes about the main principles a surgeon should have, a mastery of anatomy was followed by an attention to the patient's worries and state of mind before surgery, and third was tending to the patient's needs after the surgery was completed. Despite the varying views of him in the past, today Liston is well known as the first surgeon to perform an operation with the use of anesthesia, and his swift knife skills performing 30-second amputations. Not to mention the disastrous 300% mortality rate operation. The medical field still recognizes Liston for his amputation technique of using a flap of skin in a procedure that would be pulled over the cut end of the bone. He's also sometimes remembered for the Liston splint, which is a method he invented to immobilize fractured bones. In some ways, Liston is still with us today in medical practice. He invented surgical instruments such as the Liston knife for amputations and the locking vascular forceps which helped control bleeding from arteries during surgery. The Liston knife and forceps are still used in medical procedures today. Would you have been able to survive surgery performed by Liston? Tell us in the comments below and don't forget to hit the subscribe button.